I wanted to talk to you about uh, clutch moments. When you're in those situations, how do you avoid distractions? Uh, consciously breathing first. That's, that's probably the, the simplest thing that you could do, but probably the most effective. I think the experience of being in this particular situation so many times before in my career helps me every next time that I have to face the adversity and face the distractions and you know my thoughts and what ifs and fears and, and so forth. I think everyone goes through that thought process. It's just, um, and, and I don't think it's particularly bad. I was thinking it's, it's bad, so I was trying to um, ignore it or I was trying to shut it down. But I think the major transformation in a positive way for me started when I was starting to acknowledge it and, and, and accept it as, as part of me. It's, it's, it's there, my ego is there, my fears are there, everything is there. It's present, but then how will I address it in a way that is going to help me to overcome that, to transform it into positive fuel that is going to help me overcome the clutch moments that you talked about, um, just feel happy and joyful and present on the court and get the best out of that experience. Just notice the first thing he said there was my breath. We don't acknowledge enough the power of our breath. When I'm working with clients one-on-one -on -one, or really in any scenario where we're trying to build some mental stability or flexibility or resilience, the breath is always right underneath our nose. It's right in front of us and it is tremendously powerful. So I love that he mentioned that. And then he goes in, clearly he's met with therapists or teachers or train like mind training or whatever, because then he goes on to state one of the other most important lessons to learn about our psychology is he said initially he probably tried to push away his negative thoughts or make them go away or whatever. And then he transitioned into this turning to the negativity. He uses the word ego to turning to the discomfort, turning to these negative narratives we have in our mind. And rather than pushing them away, accepting them as part of us, allowing them in, not running from them. And that is a that is the core of most psychotherapies really is how do we face the things that we don't like, not run from them, integrate them into who we are so that we can then move on. Um, yeah. To build on that, I think what's, what's interesting is um, how in the sort of the mental health space, the, the spiritual space, there's always the, the P word used, which is practice, <laughs> like br breathing practices, mindfulness practices. So it's like, you know, I would practice my tennis stroke in preparation for something. I would practice my breathing and practicing my ability to be mindful in preparation. So I think I think what's super important here, and I, th I think it's relevant to a, like maybe the previous point I made about developing those skills, like mindful breathing or being able to enter a more meditative state where you can sort of see your thoughts as passing clouds that sort of in one ear, out another, or whatever metaphor you'll, you'll use is not something that you can just do, right? Right. Especially when things are stressful, especially when you're in a, cl what, what the interviewer asked Djokovic here about when you're in a clutch situation, it's, it's so challenging <laughs> to control your thoughts, control your, your body and to control your breathing. Cause those things are, are powerful biological forces that are operating sort of sometimes independently of our own, my, our, our own hmm. conscious thoughts. Um, so getting a hold of those, I think, like on, on our own time matters. So like spending five or 10 minutes meditating, a few minutes here and there, practicing different breathing exercises. So when it comes to entering a difficult tennis match, an interview, whatever, that's, that's tough. You sort of have this little tool you can put it, pull out of your, your toolbox and it, it's refined and ready to go. Um, yeah. I bet he does a ton of practice. I know he meditates. I think he'll talk about it in a second. Yeah. He's got to do a ton of breathing exercises because you can't just breathe in the finals of Wimbledon <laughs> without having done a ton of work developing that skill. Yeah. Yeah. And John kabat a very famous mindfulness teacher, doctor, points this out in, in his book, Wherever You Go, There You Are. But he talks about we can't just say we'll be mindful when we get triggered. We Because our yeah. the biological forces influencing those moments are so strong that just saying we'll be mindful or to breathe or whatever is useless. And that just, this is in the context of him describing 
practice and the biggest barrier to one's lifelong practice is the thinking mind. So all these things, I shouldn't do this. I don't need to do this. No, I need to work on my forehand today. You know, Djokovic probably has to fight that all the time. No, no, no. I need to work on my back end. I need to work on my volley. And no, I need to sit down and breathe because clearly the breathing or whatever practices he does help him so much. So this is that balance of expanding our practices being disciplined about them and yeah. honoring that we can't just call on them if we don't practice. The worry, the worry I have sometimes with my own sort of like daily existence is what am I, what habits am I in inadvertently laying down in my brain? Right. So like if I'm on YouTube, I'm trying to find something specific, but then I get sort of trapped in some of these YouTube shorts or like, Oh, there's this video. And I open that, that tab and Oh, there's another video open this tab, And suddenly I'm wiring inadvertently a bit of attention deficit patterns right where i got all this stuff yeah i'm yeah. so distracted but meanwhile i'm the the ultimate goal of what i'm trying to do to at least in in times of teaching in times of tennis in times of being with my with my wife or with my with my daughter is to be focused so sometimes thinking about all the other sort of mindless times that we're spending what that might be doing to our own uh emotional patterns is, is useful and trying to clean up some of those like even those little moments when you're you have a bit of a break you're like, all right, how am I going to spend this time? Or catching yourself when you're like, oh, you know what? I'm sort of like doom scrolling hmm. or I'm I'm getting trapped in this sort of this choice between YouTube clips to watch. And like, no, 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 hold on. This is just reinforcing a, a sort of a cognitive pattern that I don't want. And I'm going to stop. Right. And I think that's super useful. So I sometimes think about all the sort of the inadvertent things I've done and how I need to clean that up. Yeah, and if you relate that to him in a tennis match, it's like mm. getting distracted by someone chirping him in the audience or the ref calling things in a way that he doesn't like or who knows, whatever. But that's a similar, how do we maintain our focus on what we're trying to do in the moment mm -hmm. that aligns with our ultimate goals and pursuits? Mm -hmm. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. Please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.